Professor Lim Sun Sun. Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of the Tobacco Control of Advertisements and Sale Bill. This proposed move towards plain packaging will align Singapore with the World Health Organization's Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, along with countries such as Australia, France, New Zealand and the United Kingdom, which have also mandated standardised packaging for tobacco products. I would like to commend the Ministry of Health for its considerable preparatory work in proposing these changes, referencing over 200 studies and holding three rounds of public consultations. Such a concerted effort to stem smoking is crucial because it exacts a significant toll on our society, as the Senior Minister of State noted earlier. Over the last 10 years, Singapore has seen no definitive patterns of sustained decline in smoking prevalence, which has hovered between 12 and 14 per cent. According to a study published in Asia and the Pacific Policy Studies, smoking prevalence in Singapore approximates 15% among adults and 6% among youths aged 13 to 15 years old. Notably, research by the Singapore Cancer Society found that 80% of adult smokers in Singapore picked up the habit before reaching 21. Indeed, studies in other parts of the world have shown that people who smoke during adolescence are 16 times more likely to become adult smokers. Given the evidence that early experimentation with smoking is a predictor for smoking dependency in adulthood, we must therefore do our utmost to discourage our young from acquiring this harmful habit. I would like to therefore take this opportunity to draw the attention of the House to an issue of growing concern worldwide. This is the circumvention of restrictions on tobacco advertising by multinational tobacco companies through the use of insidious social media campaigns. These campaigns capitalize on the appeal of social media influencers through photographs featuring these young role models smoking in cool venues while wearing trendy clothing accompanied by catchy hashtags. Deceptively, however, no explicit mention is made of the tobacco companies behind these campaigns. Such visually arresting content seeks to depict smoking as a normal practice among young people and indeed showcases smoking as a glamorous and desirable lifestyle choice. In the United States, the Campaign for the Tobacco-Free Kids has led several organizations, including the American Academy of Pediatrics and the American Lung Association, to mount a petition requesting action by the U.S. Federal Trade Commission. This petition asserts that tobacco companies are actively promoting smoking via hundreds of thousands of images, hashtags and videos shared by young people on social media platforms such as Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. The reach of such content is sizable. Research by the petitioners found that a mere 123 hashtags linked to these tobacco companies' social media campaigns were viewed 8.8 .8 .8 billion times in the U.S and 25 billion times worldwide just on Twitter alone. These multinational tobacco companies have initiated such media campaigns in numerous countries throughout Asia, Europe, the Middle East, and Central North and South America, roping in high-profile youth influencers in each country. Closer to home, tobacco companies have funded such campaigns in neighboring countries such as Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, and Thailand. Influencers are given strict instructions on which cigarettes to feature, how to take natural photographs which do not resemble advertisements, when they should post these images for optimal audience engagement, as well as the hashtags that they must use. In one particular country, the influencers were even told to conceal the health warnings on the cigarette packs before posting the images. Such shady tactics are calculated to mislead young people into thinking that these images are organic social media content that simply reflect youth culture. While there is fortunately no evidence to show that social media influencers in Singapore have been targeted by tobacco companies in this way, the porous and borderless nature of the internet means that young Singaporeans can nevertheless be exposed to such images. Many social media influencers also have a global fan base, so even campaigns originating from well beyond our shores can appeal to our youths if influencers with a strong following in Singapore are mobilized. 
After all, Singaporeans are avid social media users, with young Singaporeans being the most active. Of particular pertinence to Singapore is the fact that most of these social media campaigns promoting smoking almost exclusively use English, even when it is not the lingua franca of the country from which these campaigns originate. The highly visual nature of social media platforms such as Instagram, Facebook and Snapchat also means that language is essentially no barrier to the communicative impact of such images. This is yet another issue, in addition to online falsehoods, that shows how the extensive reach of big technology companies with a global presence has significant ramifications for society. Because of the lack of transparency surrounding the algorithms that determine what content social media platforms serve us, we cannot discern why we may be seeing more of particular forms of content. Neither can we exert more active control over our social media feeds should we so choose. Young people who like, share or comment on images portraying negative behaviours as hip and trendy with particular hashtags may be unwittingly served more of such images on their social media feeds. Such transnational social media campaigns that actively promote smoking will undo the value of and hard work of anti-tobacco legislation and enforcement that have been in place worldwide for decades. Hence, I would like to ask the Senior Minister of State whether there will be greater effort made to track the use of social media by tobacco and e-cigarette companies for promoting their wares in Singapore through such underhanded methods. I would also like to ask whether the Ministry will work with the Advertising Standards Authority of Singapore to establish more concrete guidelines around the responsibilities of social media influencers with regard to full disclosure in cases of sponsored content by tobacco and e-cigarette companies. I would further like to suggest that the Ministry works with its counterparts in ASEAN and countries further afield, as well as the World Health Organization, to take action against this egregious and damaging practice of using social media campaigns to circumvent restrictions against tobacco advertisements. In addition, I would also like to suggest that the Minister engages with big technology companies to remind them of the contributory and supportive role they should play in helping to minimise young people's exposure to images portraying smoking in a positive light. These companies possess the ability to alter their algorithms to stem the spread of such images in the same way that they have algorithms to weed out obscene and extremist content. Mr. Speaker, in Chinese, please. Please. Tian 形象所吸引因此社交媒体已经成为我国卫生当局对抗以吸烟为理想生活方式这一营销手段的新领域卫生部必须联合其他国家和世界卫生组织一同采取行动反对这一不良发展趋势 in conclusion, Mr. Speaker, I hereby register my concerns about the deleterious trends surrounding novel and surreptitious ways of promoting smoking and vaping. I strongly support this bill and hope that the Ministry will monitor such covert marketing to Singapore's youth with a view to an even stronger bill in future.